G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. With that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and let's get right into it. Posted by user Mija512, titled, I, 38 female, am in a new relationship with 51 male, and his texts are starting to concern me. My current boyfriend and I have been together since February, and we've had a few arguments, but generally things are good. What I can't wrap my head around is some of the text messages that he sends me. They come out of nowhere and feel a little bit nuts to me. I don't know if I'm the one being a jerk here, but I don't know what to make of them. I've told him it puts me off, but he doesn't seem to hear me. This is an example of one that he sent today after he video called at lunch. I answered, but he hung up and wouldn't answer when I called back. I left a message saying that I guess he didn't have service and couldn't answer, but just call back if it's important. His reply was, what would be the point in answering after seeing you were dressed, makeup on, and hair done? That tells me that you have been up for hours, and in that time, I guarantee that your phone has been in your hand a lot, and never once did you have the desire or want to call or text and say hello, good morning, I love you, or even F off for that matter. And that makes me feel like shit to be real honest, so I didn't answer. Five minutes later I got, and because you still have nothing to say, that just tells me I was right. In the comments, JDPi33 says, Nope. I promise things will get worse if you don't get away from this person. A 51 year old boy. He never grew up. It's concerning when he suddenly needs to make her his whole life, and whines when she isn't immediately available. Serious red flags. At his age, it most certainly is concerning. It's like he never matured after age 14. He should know better by now, which is probably why he was single at 51. A lot of married and taken men are like this too. Remember that OP was engaged to him, so it's not like being in a relationship automatically means the man or woman in that relationship is a good person. Toxic relationships are common. This is bad in any relationship, but in a relationship with a man who is in his 50s and should be emotionally matured by now, break up immediately. Literally sounds like the boyfriend I had when I was 16. Made me remember my abusive boyfriend from when I was 15. Exact same thing. Run, don't walk OP. You are underreacting. It's batshit possessive, irrational behavior that there isn't even a sliver of reason worth engaging him over. You can't reason with a nutburger hell-bent on being upset. And OP replies, I'm taking the advice here and ending it. He sent me another message that just doubled down on the crazy and aggressive, so I am done. You guys are right. He moved in with me about a month ago, and I'm real nervous about having this conversation with him in person, so I just packed a bag of all my important stuff, and I'm going to stay with a friend. I'm sending him a message that he has until Monday to move out. There are some extenuating circumstances that make giving him a 30-day notice unnecessary. I didn't really know what else to do, but I've seen him get angry before, and I don't want to be at the receiving end of that. Quicksilver1964 replies, I'm sorry, but four months dating and he moved into your house, and you left him there by himself for three to four days? What if he destroys it? I would have packed all his bags and put it outside, and called a friend to stay with me, and ready myself to call the police. Please don't move in people you barely know into your house next time. Seriously, this is dangerous. And now, on to the update. I packed a bag, my laptop, gun, important paperwork, etc. Most of my stuff is in storage because we were supposed to move at the end of the month. I didn't want to leave him there, but his texts got really ugly when I told him that it was over. I feel a lot safer at my friend's house out of town. The barrage of texts have gone from nasty, to desperate, to accusing me of lying and never caring about him, to him taking photos of gifts he supposedly bought me, to threatening to hurt himself and me. Apparently, I'm not giving a shit about it, but here I sit trying to effing talk to you and work this effing thing out because I care more about you than I do the lies. I love you, D. Why can't that be enough for you? I am so done with this bullshit. It's probably going to be hard trying to get him out of my life, but I'm saving the texts and going to, at least try, to get a protective order tomorrow. Thank you for all your comments. They reaffirmed that this behavior is unacceptable. I think I kept adjusting to a new normal every time he would do something that was off, but not quite bad enough to break up over. We had endless talks about his behavior, and he was very good at reassuring me he'd work on it, and then being the best boyfriend imaginable. 
It's like he's two different people, but I'm positive the nice side is an absolute lie now after some of the stuff that he said. I'm safe for now, and definitely won't be going home without an escort. To answer questions about why he moved in so quickly, we've been good friends for five years, and he never once acted like this. I thought I knew him pretty well, so that's why I gave him the benefit of the doubt for so long and let him move in. When he proposed, it was so romantic, and he was so convincing, I got a little swept up in the idea that it was real. Unexposed is by user Orange Cat Buddy, titled 12 grades in kindergarten, only to be walked out on the last day in handcuffs. Because that is exactly what happened today. A senior decided on his very last day of school to literally piss on a teacher. The seniors went way overboard with their pranks. They broke into the school after the overnight custodians left at 2am. They pulled desks and chairs out into the halls, stacked them into piles so that no one could get through the halls. There were chairs piled in the lunchroom, and just about every place they shouldn't be. The kicker is when the seniors decided to piss on an older teacher. He was arrested, and as far as I know, will be charged with felonious assault. It is my understanding that they know who was involved with the rest of the vandalism. Criminal charges will be filed. This is what they get when admin is more worried about a state report card, and less about taking care of simple housekeeping matters. In the comments, Planesdrifter71 says, School custodian here, good the little bastard effed around and found out. I remember what the cheerleader did to our locker room during the homecoming game and felt awful for the custodial staff. I thought it was cringeworthy then and still do now. I agree totally. It's every year, but hold my beer, the seniors came here Wednesday night to trash the school and the goddamn principal was here and let them do it. Last night, three kids snuck into the building at midnight, nothing trashed thankfully, and tonight we had kids on the football field acting like they're on a camping trip, complete with blankets, football, and a Bluetooth speaker. Not gonna lie, the football field camping trip is pretty damn funny. I can see how that would be pretty disruptive though. I think a harmless prank like that is fine as long as the students clean up after themselves. A bit of disruption is okay for a senior prank. Back in the day, we hired a mariachi band to follow our principal around, and it was honestly a lot of fun, even for him. This stupid kid messed up his future, and for what? So his friends think he's edgy or cool? He could have been charged with indecent exposure and been put on a sex offender registry. OP replies, If I know the teacher he did this to, she will see this to the end. She has nothing to lose and has had it. Admin wouldn't do anything, and this kid has been a PIA to her all year. Now, she holds the cards. Our seniors hired a mariachi band to play for an hour in our cafeteria, and it was effing glorious. Really lucked out this year. Our principal, under no uncertain terms, warned staff not to give their scan cards into the building because the scan records our names, and he left it at that. Nobody on staff let the kids in, and that probably kept it as lighthearted as it did. Back up to the post, there is an edit update. Wow, never expected this to go beyond the teacher's subreddit. The text messages have been busy this morning, but this is what I know so far. The teacher who was assaulted has evidently filed criminal charges. Unsure of what? There is a rumor that an additional charge was added because he prevented her from getting away. Again, that's part of the rumors. It's not clear how the kids got into the building. I do know that there are several sub-door keys missing. The term stacked, when it comes to the chairs, is misleading. It was more like they were tossed into a pile. It was not a neat, orderly stack. There will be no real updates until Monday morning. I'm certain this will be the subject of our morning talk. For those of you who think schools are open books, boy, you are mistaken. Kids are pretty much allowed to run rampant because this is a litigious world we live in. Administrators are more concerned with keeping school boards happy and less about discipline when it's necessary. The same admin will do everything in their power to keep this quiet. They have an ignorance is bliss policy when it comes to things like this. And now onto the update. I posted a few days ago about a young man who decided to pee on a teacher on his last day of school. Well, here is an update. Turns out he turned 18 in March. He was held in the county jail over the weekend without bail. He has been charged with two felonies. I'm leaving this here. It seems to be pissing some people off, and two misdemeanors. There are a couple of other pending charges, but they need to go to the grand jury. He was arraigned Monday morning and was given an OR bond. 
He was also ordered to have no contact with the teacher and to stay at least 500 feet from her, her home, and her place of work. This is in effect until this is resolved. The teacher who was peed on is obviously livid and distressed over the matter. The young man apparently walked into the area that she has her desk and peed on the back of her feet. The way her desk is set up, there is only one way in and out of the area. Apparently this kid has been threatening to do this since Christmas break. This came from a situation when he asked for the third time to use the bathroom and was told no. He told her he would piss on her heels on the last day of school, and she dismissed it as his running off at the mouth. As for the vandals and their senior prank, as of yesterday, the number I heard was over $7,000 in damages, mostly furniture that was busted. Looking at some of the security video, they hurled chairs down the hallways. One of the entry doors to the rear of the school had the glass busted out. They used a sub-teacher key to enter the building. We knew that a few were missing, and they figured that subs were walking off with them. They need to account for them better. I asked why the alarm didn't trip. Was told that because there is only a three-hour gap between the overnight custodians and the day custodians, they don't arm the alarm. It only goes on over the weekend and long breaks. The kids who were involved were all given 10-day suspensions. That means none of them will walk this weekend, and three will have to come back when summer school picks up to take a couple of exams. No one will be given their diplomas or transcripts released until the bill for the damage is paid in full. That prompted a marine recruiter to visit yesterday. One of the three is scheduled to ship out to Paris Island in June and can't without a diploma. Of course, there are parents screaming about it as well. The way I and others see it, they put their heads together and pulled their prank. They can put their heads together and figure out how to pay it off. The senior pranks here have mostly been annoying at the worst. This went over the line. The pisser had nothing to do with the prank and is just a little asshole. I'm hoping the juniors are paying attention and do not try to outdo this group. I'm also hoping the school board doesn't cave in and let the kids off the hook. They need to allow more out-of-school suspensions, expulsions, and even detentions to resume. In the meantime, I'm looking to go somewhere else, and I have a couple of prospects. Edit. For those of you who seem to think that she had it coming because she wouldn't let the kid go to the bathroom, you need to understand this. He was the kid who asked to go every single period. He never actually went to the bathroom. He would wander the halls. He's been caught several times outside on the basketball court, playing invisible basketball, among other things. Normally, he liked to walk into classes that he didn't belong in and cause problems. It came to head with this particular teacher during a fire drill just after the Christmas break. The kid went to the bathroom, except he didn't. The fire drill came down, and she couldn't account for the kid. She red flagged and the fire marshal and others had to go look for the kid. It took a half hour, but they found him near the middle school. She got her ass reamed over that, of course he got little more than a smack on the hand. She decides to limit one student to the bathroom at a time after that and limits the time that you're allowed to be gone. Of course she's more lenient to others. He decides he wants to go a third time one day and there was already a kid out. She says no, he gets mouthy and his threats come then. So for all of you know-it-alls, who thinks she was wrong for not letting a kid go on a little walk, you'd be the first ones asking why the school allowed him to go if he had hurt one of your little darlings. In the comments, this isn't a prank. This is destruction of property, and I hope that they spend the summer working. And for the pisser, lol, what is the backstory here? So gross. I hope he gets arrested. Also, if he exposed himself to kids under 18, he's in some trouble. This happened to a colleague of mine in high school. Kid was always bragging about how big his dick was, his name was Adonis of course, and one day he decided to take it out to show everybody. I don't remember if he got any consequences, probably minimal. Maybe he had heard that the allegedly true story of the former president LBJ doing the same thing in the 60s. He did it in front of a group of adults, but still, ugh. They screwed around and found out. That's more consequences than I normally hear about nowadays. That's because they're seniors going out the door probably. Too bad they didn't try to properly discipline them the past 13 years. Maybe this wouldn't have happened. That's on the parents, not the teachers. They are not a pseudo-parent babysitter. We'll tell that to the actual parents, and the admins, and the school board. I doubt they could let the pisser off the hook even if they wanted to. It's a sex crime on top of everything else. You can't go spreading your bodily fluids around without consent. 
I think the marine recruiter one is hilarious. If the kid was supposed to ship off, then he shouldn't have participated in the prank. Sucks to be him. Recruiters tell new recruits all the time to not get any tattoos or do anything that will send them to jail between signing the contract and shipping out. He can ship at a later date and catch a later basic training. Or the marines can easily file a couple of pieces of paper and kick him out. It's a lot easier to kick out a pre-basic recruit than to do it later when he inevitably causes issues. Seriously, maybe the kid who just helped cause thousands of dollars in damage to a government building shouldn't join the military and be given a gun right this second. Recruiters should be giving that kid a talking to and figuring out whether he's fit to serve instead of throwing a temper tantrum at the school. Unex post is by user AntiqueFroyo2378 titled Am I the asshole? Left wallet in best friend's car. She's mad that I had my cards cancelled. So I left my wallet in my best friend's car over the weekend. Every time we set a time to meet, she cancels, changes the time, or has an excuse as to why she can't meet for me to get my wallet. I offered to go to her house, but she's never home. So I told her that I'm just going to have my debit card and the other cards that I have in my car wallet cancelled and or reported as stolen. She flipped her shit and told me I'm a bitch and an asshole for doing that and that it shows how bad of a friend I am for not trusting her and how I'm bullying her by treating her like a thief and criminal. In the comments, Salted Labia says, Not the asshole. If I had a friend react like this, my first assumption would be that they're trying to steal from me. Freeze your cards and check the charges on them. Any of my friends would just give me the wallet undisturbed. She's being shady. Honestly surprised she didn't freeze them as soon as she realized she didn't have them, just to be safe. Only takes a minute or so to do. Probably assumed that she wouldn't have to worry about a friend. I've lost a wallet drunk at a friend of a friend's house, and they literally texted that morning to come by and get it. Or if I couldn't, his little brother would run it by on the way to work. OP replies, I would also like to add that she said I was bullying her by having my cards cancelled, and if I was a real friend, I would have never done such a thing to her. To her? You did the responsible thing. There is no good reason for her to be so upset. You don't need a friend like this. There is something wrong with her. Red flags. Cancel your cards, please. Check your online records for the transactions, not the asshole. Overreaction on her part about you cancelling your cards. She shouldn't hold on to your identity and cards for so long. You should cancel and report losing your wallet. Overreaction is an understatement. If you were a real friend, you wouldn't cancel your cards? What the hell did I just read? Right? It's more like a real friend would know how important someone's wallet is and make more of an effort. And now, on to the update. Hey all. I wasn't expecting such an overwhelming response. The wallet has been returned, it was left with a security guard at the entrance gate where I live. But thank you to everyone who took time to respond and give advice and their opinions on this situation. It was greatly appreciated. In regards to the cards, and as to why I cancelled them, was because with my bank you get same day replacements. The friendship has been ended. It was a mutual agreement. I should have been more mindful of her red flags, and I should have taken into account that she was never really a friend, and was more so using me. And that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it down below in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.